It says, open rebuke is better than secret love. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Now, this is a, a pretty clear teaching. It's, it's pretty plain to see that, that there is open rebuke, which is better than secret love. There is faithful wounds of a friend, and the kisses of the enemy are deceitful. But what it's giving you is the idea that, that almost seems contrary. Why, why would a friend wound you? Why would an enemy kiss you? Because it's explaining a, a very simple truth in that when people wound you sometimes, when they openly rebuke you, they're actually doing it out of love. I gave this illustration this week as I was, I was driven to the airport by a coworker. I explained to him as, as he was telling me that he just recently started going back to church and he decided to go to the great big mega church because they had all the programs, they had all the things going on. He was going through a really rotten time in his life and he went and he jumped into that church. I said, hey, that's fine. I'm good to see you making the right steps towards God. He grew up independent Baptist. He grew up learning the right doctrine. But now his baby step was to go into the mega church. I said, that's fine. You're going to go. You're going to get encouraged. And for a while, it's going to help you. But there's going to come a time when you want to hear doctrine. I'm like, you're going to find out that when people are constantly trying to give you good news and trying to encourage you and trying to build you up, they're lying to you. It, it, just, it just never failed, right? Because you're a man, and eventually they're going to see something wrong with you. But if your preacher is just telling you positive all the time, he's lying to you. Here's the illustration. It's this. You get out of a, a nice big dinner. You just had a smorgasbord. you got stuff all over your face. And five of your friends come up to you, and they're like, hey, man, how you doing? Nice to meet you. Good seeing you again. Everything's going great. You're looking good, man. Have a nice day. And one after another, they come, and they encourage you, and they strengthen you, and they lift you up, and they build you up, and they say you're an awesome guy. And then the preacher comes, and he's like, man, you've got stuff all over your face. You look like garbage. I mean, it's disgusting. I can't even look at you. It's so bad. And you're going to be like, ah, oh, you're going to be wounded. What do you mean? You're going to be so hurt by that. But then the honest and just and righteous and good and loving preacher will take that napkin and say, here, man, clean yourself up. It's here. It's there. It's everywhere. And he's going to help you first by showing you the problem, then by giving you the ability where which you can clean it up. And I'm like, and you're not going to get that at that mega church. You're not going to have people tell you that you're a sinner, that you've fallen short, that you messed up last week, that this is wrong, that that is wrong, that everything you're doing two-thirds of the time is a failure, and then loving you enough to say that and then giving you the ability to clean it up. And he got that. It makes sense. He's like, yes, I'm wounded, but the wisdom of knowing what's on my face allows me to do something about it, to reach out, take that napkin, and wipe it off and clean it up. And that's what happens when you hear open rebuke. And that is much better than secret love. Open rebuke is much better than secret love because open rebuke is open love. That's what it is. It is giving you what you need to hear. It is giving you what you need to know so that you can fix it. If you got stuff all over your face, you want to fix it. You don't want to walk around like that. If you got sin in your life, you want to fix it. You don't want to walk around and live a life like that. And all that open rebuke does is it brings that to the surface. It says, hey man, you're messed up. You look bad. You're, 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 you're wrong in this. You're doing this wrong. You're doing that wrong. Let me help you fix it. Let me help you do something about it and that's what is loving faithful are the wounds of a friend a friend will tell you when you've messed up it'll tell you when you're wrong he will wound you it will hurt and but that same friend will be there to lift you up when you fall seven times that same friend will be that 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 second that is with you helping you keep warmth like we learned earlier in the chapters of Ecclesiastes you need that kind of stuff in your life. What you don't need are deceitful kisses. What you don't need is the lies of people saying, you look great, man. You're doing fine. There's nothing wrong with your lifestyle. Keep on keeping on. Keep singing that song of fools, right? Keep, keep understanding that, hey, man, you were just born that way. You just follow your heart, man. Just, just do what feels right for you. That is hateful. That is hurtful. That is a deceitful kiss. That's giving you something positive, right, which is the kiss, but it's just like Judas's kiss was to Jesus. It was a deception. It was a lie. It was harmful. 